and see what, and, and possibly prevent some sort of counter jungling for, for, from Shivana. And I think you know with Trundle teleport, I mean we're gonna see you know some amazing you know objective fights where whether we see a Trundle teleport to a ward near Dragon, maybe a ward near Red Buff. Um, and, and so it's, it's we're gonna see Trundle is actually a beast. Once he got once he gets a little bit of farm, he's hard to kill. He's got the pillar of filth, which allows for a lot of displacement. And I think what he's we're seeing the... here is a uh oh. It's an invade, but you can check it with the shuriken really, really quickly. And Trundle's going to be able to get out of this. They know that Team Easy is invading bottom, so they're in turn going to invade red now. Olaf rotating down. He is the main jungler. I think we're going to see an early M5 strat. Um, the, or the the uh, something that's similar to the M5 strat where the ranged AD and support are going to go top. So that's actually something I wanted to point out that was actually pretty smart there, is that they placed the ward first before they entered the brush instead of just face checking. Uh, it blindly getting blown up possibly by five people. Uh, they placed the ward first to get a little bit of vision, so it wasn't just a, a blind uh, face check. So very smart uh, play there by Easy. Something you typically will not see, and it will also let them, uh, you know, get vision if uh, uh, they get invaded, counter invaded. So probably just gonna steal these rays and go for red, I imagine. And the interesting ward right here uh, you might see some counter action uh, from. MTW there. Guessing we're probably going to pull this red around behind. Trundle trying to spot this. And he will see that red is getting sold, so that's going to be the cue for Olaf. He sees uh, red and steal that in response. Let's see if Olaf. Uh, did he save his smite? Yes, he did save his smite, so he's going to use his smite on red on Team EZ, so that way he will not fall behind and can actually steal it real quickly. And we actually have a 2v1 top, so this is an interesting uh, idea to deal with Kennen. Uh, Kennen normally a very, very solid top solo. And we're going to see a Trundle 2v1, so now this kind of... Because really, uh, both, both solos are going to get zoned. It's just a matter of which solo gets to farm more before the lanes break, because eventually they will swap back um, when we get more around a, a time when dragon control becomes more important. Uh, the question is how much uh, CS can you deny from your opponent? And Trundle is pretty tanky and good uh, anti-AD, but at the same time he's a melee character where Kennen actually has that long range with a shuriken and can farm from range. So I think Kennen might come out a little bit ahead on uh, this uh, strategy right here by uh, MTW. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, and and the, one of the key components of this strategy is the ability to use your so bring your support from top because you're there in this situation. Um, Leona might actually be able to have a, a bigger advantage by rotating into for ganks on mid, so you kind of get like a tri gank on mid when the jungler comes down and the support can leave that lane. Uh, whereas Kinnon uh, still has range and has some mobility uh, to to deal with uh, any sort of uh, major aggression. Now the good thing to know about Trundle is Trundle's sustain is way higher than Kennen. Uh, Trundle's passive allows him to regenerate health when creeps die. And here we have a gank coming in here from Shivana, running that burnout, trying to catch her down, but Ash, Ash Atlanta is actually going to easily uh, counter that. And uh, one of the things I might have expected them was for Shivana to give that early blue to rise. I think that I might have worked out a little bit better in their favor, uh, but you know, in this situation, they're gonna let Shivana just maintain her experience and farm in the jungle, and then probably for that second blue hook rise up. Yeah, it looks like we have some counter jungling action here. Cassiope gonna get a little bit of vision. Support their rise running over. Gonna realize that the rays were probably stolen. Maybe clean those out for his buddy. And Ryze is actually going to want to be careful because he's going to take quite a bit of harass here on his way back to lane. And you know, this is a really good lane uh, against Ryze. Cassiopeia, very, very good against Ryze. Ryze has trouble early on. Uh, he's kind of a slow character. Why you see the boots on him and the three pots to sustain against this. But Cassiopeia's Q is very, very mana efficient and is incredible for uh, damage. And it's going to be spammed. And Ryze has a tough time against uh, spamming characters uh, in lane. So good pick by MTW to go against this Ryze. So if we go ahead and just, because the, 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 the lanes that we want to look at in terms of CS, or in, in terms of Denier, is going to be, Kennen's actually sitting at 18 and Trundle sitting at 12. Not 
too big of a difference from those those lanes that are dealing with a one one v two. Uh, Shivana has shown herself in top lane uh, for a little bit. Um, I actually think when Kennen hits six, he should be able to hit six before Ash and Janna. So if they actually wanted to send Shivana out and maybe hit like level five, they actually could collapse when Kennen hits six. Could make for an interesting gang top lane. Otherwise, I don't think Shivana wants to be, you know camping that lane so to speak. I think they want to let Kennen just hit six. Uh, and he's actually not doing a horrible job last hitting here. He's now up to twenty four. Well what I actually like about this by the the creeps because uh Shivana was giving that pressure on top. And so uh we haven't seen Olaf come down bottom so you know Trundle doesn't have that advantage. Trundle doesn't have the advantage of having his jungler coming down because, you know, bottom's more heavily warded typically. And so without that presence, you know, he's going to have a harder time trying to last hit, where Siobhan just comes up here for a couple seconds. Kenan can actually just run up, run up there and just normally melee uh, or range, do his range attack and uh, hit the creeps. Yeah, also right now his biggest problem is uh, he's out of sustain. He doesn't have any pots and he doesn't have any way to actually get the health back. Uh, Trundle was able to go for an armor of five pots, and use that teleport and give him that um that longer sustain and with teleport he's not going to be you know out of lane that long so he's you know he's, he's doing actually doing pretty good in a 1v2 situation Kenan right now looks like he's has teleport still on cooldown so he will have that up in a couple minutes might go back just him and Ash dueling it out now Janna going back Buying up some more wards for later, and it looks like Shivana maybe. So we're now about seven minutes into the game, or just over seven minutes, and this is going to be a key point whether or not we see some sort of aggression on the enemy blue, or in inside the enemy blue, or inside the uh, the enemy on the enemy red. Uh, both of these mid laners want blue buff. They're both blue mana dependent, and it's actually going to be. Probably Cassiopeia, who's going to be a little bit safer because they have kind of four, um, four champions top. So you're not going to see much aggression from Shivana. Um, and the blue buff for Rise is actually going to be a little bit behind because they they took it second, whereas Olaf started it right off the game. We actually have an, an invade uh, gank here on mid. First blood going to go down. Wow, I can't believe he even had uh, even had the wards there. I don't know exactly. Why he fell asleep there? Maybe he just thought that you know he was going to continue to run up into the jungle and he wasn't worried about it, or, or what exactly happened there? But Ryan's getting caught out there in mid, and that is very, very unfortunate uh, for Team Easy right now. And Sick Motion is kind of sitting in the jungle. I don't necessarily know what he's doing. Is maybe he's DC'd or something possibly? Or oh, there we go. Now he's online. I mean, he's kind of been very patient in the jungle. But he's actually going to give up red and not steal it. So. Don't necessarily know what the strategy was there. He was kind of camping out in the jungle, and he was like pausing around, and yeah, you know, I wasn't sure exactly what he was doing. And then kind of gives up red there, and it's kind of unfortunate. And now Caspia has blue, which is not going to be good for Ryaz. Hopefully, he gets it fed right here by Shivana, uh very soon. Now, also Cassiopeia did not have to burn Flash or her ult for that gang, so uh, she's going to be real deadly. And I think they're going to go and contest. The purple side blue buff. Well, it just looks like a forward ward. Now, the one thing that is important is Team Easy has pinked ward dragon, so they're going to have a little bit of ward control from that, unless uh, you know MTW comes in with their own pink ward. But at the same time, you know Cassiopeia with blue can take down buffs Actually, very, Rise very quickly. Actually, going to be in real trouble. It depends on how quickly. Here comes the aggression from Cassie. Actually, going to take a little bit of harass and a turret shot. Ends up being about a little bit even. If Cassie had been a little bit faster with that ward placement, she could have rotated down and waited for Ryze to come back through that, uh, come back to lane, and she could have potentially picked him off and bursted him down. Oh yeah, especially if she led with her ult, you know, he kind of face checking that running back through. It is a dangerous path. Reggie tried to use it against us yesterday. Luckily, we walked around the the safe way, <laughs> up and around. Now we actually have an Ash Arrow coming on mid. Just gonna miss. It's gonna hit nothing as it flies through the map. Like that uh, map awareness and aggression uh, from MTW, and bottom turret's down about half health, and tr Trundle's very very low right now. Yeah, Looks like Team Easy's down. running up towards uh, Dragon, Olaf and Cassiopeia trying to defend this. Pink Ward is there, so they will be able to remove that ward placement, that vision. 
Looks like Ash and Janet have come down mid in responses. Don't want to give up Dragon. Kinnon also rotating down. Which is smart. Want to keep that numbers advantage on your side. Or keep it at least even. At this point with Ash Arrow down, if they were to get into a team fight, Kinnon's all is up. Um, you know, I think they would, both teams would be risking quite a bit. And I think at this point in the game, we're going to see that natural transition to a standard meta where Ash and Janna are going to maintain bot. That way they can keep dragon control. And then uh, we're going to see Trundle rotate back top. Yes, uh, that's what I do expect. It is the time. And Not a lot of damage, so um, right now I'd say coming out of that early strategy, it looks like uh, Team Easy probably has the advantage. Uh, one thing to note, uh, Olaf did was able to finish his Wriggles before Shivana. Uh, Shivana just sitting on her Blood Razor. So she's a little behind in her build, uh, not that far behind in terms of stats. It's going to come down to when one team decides to handle Dragon, I think. Uh, Olaf has started on Dragon. So when they know Shivana could be in that top area, I don't know if she's showing herself, but this could be a free dragon, which would be a really, really smart move by NTW. I know they actually uh, they've done this before with junglers. So again, very aggressive, good move, uh, and Team Easy is going to be none the wiser. Rai is doing his best uh, job at keeping really far away from Cassiopeia, trying to avoid that harassment. Actually has, you know, that blue helps his cooldown so much he can actually pop Desperate Power to clear lanes if he really needs to. And Ash Arrow coming straight up the lane. Will this land and will there be a follow-up? It does land, and he is facing Cassiopeia, so they will stack those stuns. Flash by Rise getting chased, and the Twin Fang will pick him up. Will the turret be able to get Cassiopeia? No, it won't. She will get out amazing coordination right there and follow-up, and unfortunately Rise was facing the wrong direction for Cassiopeia, so they were able to layer those stuns. Yeah, it was very impressive. You know, excellent coordination and um, one thing to note, like Rise was already 30 CS behind. Now with that kill, he's gonna lose another wave or two of CS. Uh, personally, uh, where Shivana might be able to pick up that experience, but Rise is gonna want to, you know, really focus more on getting that farm. Um, they've already lost the early dragon, and if we look at the gold deficit, where you know, Team Easy is actually sitting on about uh, down just about two and a half K. Yeah, and you know, the other thing to point out too is this middle turret is very, very low, which of any turret, if you can take it down early, middle turret uh, is pretty good to take down. And oh, we have an engagement on Kennen top. So many slows here, and he's going to lightning rush to get out of this. And if we have another stun, I thought Olaf would have died, but now he's going to have to run away. And oh, an unfortunate dragon. Uh, not going to happen. Rai's gonna pick up. But Rise does come up, pick up, picks up that kill. Again, great uh, focus by Shivana, knowing that uh, her teammate would come up and pick up that kill. So Sick Motion and Zithian are on the hunt here. But Trundle's going to be able to escape out of this with that wall uh, and that extra move speed CC reduction that he does get. And Cassiopeia, though, being a sneaky snake, sneaking up here. We might see her catch someone out. So uh. mid turret has fallen to minions at this point. And there's a quick little ward teleport coming in, so there's going to be a double gank onto Shivana. Shivana's going to be able to get out of that just in time. Troll's going to come in and probably steal this red. Yes, he will get it. So no kill, but they did steal the buff. This is very interesting uh, uh, anti-jungle uh, action here. And oh my gosh, bottom has now picked up turret. So heavy pressure from Atlanta and Lemon God down bottom. Yeah, excellent use of the Ash arrows early um, has paid off. They picked up the mid turret, they picked up the bot turret. Uh, with that teleport, they were able to steal the red buff from Shivana. Right now, Chano's going to be able to farm these these massive creep waves that's pushing. He might even be able to freeze the lane and um, and, and hinder Ken and even more. And looking at Ryze, you know, he is kind of behind. Um, he went tier, it looks like he went tier first, uh, which is pretty good for getting mana. Although against a cast of PS, someone that's going to harass you with that much damage, uh, I probably would have liked a catalyst uh, first from him. Um, I do favor the tier, but Catalyst would have let him sustain against such a harassing uh, AP mid. So it might have been a good tweak for him in his build instead of just rushing straight up for the tier. Yeah, I, I, I think I would agree with that. 
Now, Siobhan with the early oracles, this is a really good response. She's got to be careful because if she loses it right now... That would be but this is going to help them regain that map control if they can, if they can get that map control and possibly dragon, uh, they can, they should be able to you know they can get back in this game no problem. They're not that far behind. Good uh, then. Yeah. And there's the Howling Gale, and Chaos on Fire has no chance of getting out of this MTW roaming the map and just taking really quick control uh, here early. And I like that because you see a lot of teams, you know, they take down that first turret, then they go back and buy, and they kind of get settled. Yeah, they're, they're really snowballing hard right now, um, and, and this is kind of what their original plan would have been. I don't think they wanted... For Team Easy, you wanted to get out of the lanes, you know, with, you know, out of that laning phase, out of that first 18, 20 minutes with most of your turrets up, without that many deaths, uh, possibly an enemy dragon. Right now, they've lost uh, two of their auto turrets. They've lost, you know, the five deaths isn't that significant, but the the issue being is that the people that have the kills are the you know, are the right people. With uh, you know, Cassiopeia is two and zero. Oh, she's got about. 50 more creep stats on top of rise. Uh, right now, they're just you know they can't they can't even even if they were to team fight right now. It gets ignited. Graves all in right now. Heals coming in. Slight heal from Janna. Sick motion is gonna jump on top of her. Get up the kill. Make sure there's no escape. But he will not escape. This play by Atlanta infinitely slowing the enemy team. Cannon has come down now. Trying to land that shuriken. Which actually is a kunai on the skin. See them on his back? Arctic uh, Warfare, whatever, <laughs> cannon. So they were able to pick up the kill on Mandatory Cloud, which is great for them, but they they had to overcommit quite a bit of resources. Cannon had to come down to the top lane, and not only did they lose two champions, but they also lost the Oracles, which was basically a three for one. They will be able to pick up this turret to regain some of that advantage, but that was you know, that wasn't a win by any sense of yeah. the imagination. But uh, it's not looking good for them. And once you know MTW comes back out here with some wards, they have that Oracle uh, to, to counter Shivana's uh, action in the jungle, who she no longer. Again, snowballing that. There's the Ash Arrow. Absolutely, she's got to pay for that Oracle. And yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta style is probably one of my favorites of all the range AD carries uh, right now. These these top teams. He's really aggressive. If you watch him play Tristan, and even here in Ash, who's typically, you know, somewhat passive, he just un recognizes that opportunity to take those arrows. And in that situation, he saw that there was an Oracle on the support. It was worth it to be even more aggression. He knew he had a team that was going to back him up, and so he really was able to get a two for, maybe not a three for one, because they picked up that second Oracle, which is going to be basically put Team Easy really far behind here. They're going to they're going to have a lot of trouble trying to get back into this game. I think uh, at this point. Uh, they might want to turtle up even more so and actually might you know consider some sort of desperation baron play if they can maybe get uh, bot lane pushing. Yeah, it looks like uh, Janus actually going down here uh, checking out uh, Baron here. I mean, they might set up for uh, a team fight there. Again, though, they don't really want to steal. I mean, that's the best chance uh, for a team easy to win anything is to have them all bunch up around Baron, take a little extra damage, and then have them come in and layer their ults. So yep. we might just see them just you know constantly just poke around like they have been kite pick their advantages like you see like we were talking earlier you know one of the best kind of kite poke team comp uh, teams uh, in league they flip that switch 
And you know that's very the, the big difference between you know we're talking about that. And it looks like MTW has set up for Baron. They are actually going to take it. Easy wants to forfeit this Baron. Now you say, oh gosh, I can't. We, you know, we're already so far behind. We can't for you know we can't give up anything free. You know whether it's a turret or a Baron at this point. But you know outside of being able to steal it, which they aren't going to be able to do, they want to be able to forfeit. They just want to sit back and turtle and, and try. Great to Ash here coming in here helping out Trundle. Trundle's all up. backing out of this in time so Jagged will escape out of this but a lot of focus has gone to Zuna and Zuna is the take, one of the tankiest characters in this game right now and he's tower diving Kennen coming back in now except Kennen with that alt just lets you know how far ahead she is right now and there goes the uh, surrender vote and, and Olaf wants all, all parts of this so Me to you know, kind of run it back here, you know, maybe discuss, you know, what we're gonna do uh, coming up here uh, for this next. And game. I really feel for Easy. Um, you know, they they kind of went into that game similar to how you know I you know when I was playing against you know Solo Med earlier yesterday, you know, that was the exact same strategy that he used against us. They went with a more aggressive uh, top with an Urgot and a uh, Alistar, so we couldn't even invade. <laughs> so, but they ran the two top. It's it's interesting. They actually came out ahead at the beginning uh, with Kenning having more CS than Trundle. The issue being um, they they were in, stuck in a team fight comp and they didn't actually have enough advantage to get through into that when the lanes break to get into that situation. Honestly, just some quick... Uh, I don't know if this is much of my advice or just some more... What I noticed, if you're going to play Shyvana, worry less about the ganking and focus more on just the farming the enemy's jungle. If you can get to 6 faster because you took some of their jungle or you took one of their buffs, that that's what I would recommend personally. Um, other than that, I mean, the bot lane, maybe try to take that turret a little bit faster because it's going to open up that bot lane control a little bit more and also be a little bit more aware of dragon. Because once they once Janna rotated bot, she actually had a pink vision ward to clear that dragon ward, and that gave MTW the ability to take a free dragon, and they snowballed from that point forward. Um, also in the mid lane, I think Rise was just kind of at a bigger disadvantage, so maybe be on the lookout for a better lane matchup in mid. Yeah, I mean definitely, I I, I would definitely caution them to to look out for that again, you know. Cassiopeia was a great pick, great counter pick to Rise. And typically, teams that you'll see that'll fall back on Rise will ban Cassiopeia, um, just for that uh, exact instance. And it's really unfortunate, but again, you know, really tough matchup. And again, you have a great mid player, so no harm, no foul, uh, nothing to be too worried about there. So like that, you have he's both actually going to have now. first pick this time. Um, and in this, if I, if it were me, and and don't and. I actually was in this position before, and we actually got stomped game two. Uh, I would actually try and go for some sort of unorthodox strategy. Uh, maybe send, like, an Urgot mid. Um, 